Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. It's Brittany here with another video to help you guys live a happy, healthy, awesome life in a wheelchair. And today I am coming to you guys from outside of my son's orthodontist appointment. Um, and I am doing this little intro to a podcast that I did with Fredo the wheelchair guy, who is another YouTuber that I reached out to um, that I really love, that I think his content is amazing, and um, that I really feel a connection with, just with our energy and with the type of content that we make. So um, yeah, I reached out to him to see if we could collaborate on something, and he just happens to have a podcast, so he asked me to come on that. So we recorded a podcast and we recorded ourselves recording the podcast so that we could have um, some YouTube content as well. And he was gracious enough to uh, take a snippet of that and allow me to put it on my channel. So what you're going to see is our conversation about bowel and bladder and whether we would uh, rather have bowel and bladder back or walking and the interesting switch that uh, I have made in that perspective because of his sort of arguments in that area. So you'll see that whole conversation about that and um, I think it's an interesting one. So if you are watching, um, please at the end uh, leave us a comment about what your what your preference would be. If you could have your bowel and bladder back or walking but not both, which one would it be and why? Um, it's an interesting conversation for sure and one that I think is um, I think is deeply personal and it takes some thought so please give it some thought and then let us know what you think but without further ado here is the little snippet of the podcast please please if you could do me a favor go over to Fred of the wheelchair guy um, I'll put a link to his channel in the description of this video his channel is really great and uh, I just wanted to grow um, grow a lot and I want a lot of people to see and hear him because he's got a lot of great things to say so here he is now one question I really wanted to ask you and this is what uh, actually inspired us to do a podcast is that you put out a newsletter and you said most people with spinal cord injuries would take bowel and bladder function over yeah. walking and then I replied and I said I don't think so I have a different perspective imagine what you could do when you were walking like all the possibilities, if you had the use of your legs back and, you know, how many times do you wee or poo in a day, but you could walk like, and how much easier would it be to clean yourself up if you could, if you could stand up? And then you said, you know what? Yeah. That's an interesting perspective. And I wanted to discuss it. And I said, well, why don't we talk about it on the podcast? So. I literally have changed my perspective on that entirely. And I I don't know why I never thought about it the way that you had put it before, but it's so obvious to me now. I'm like, why would I ever choose bowel and bladder? Especially like, maybe it would, I would worry if I like had an accident or something standing up. Cause now if I have a pee accident and I sit down, it's under my butt. Yeah. So that might be something that I would worry about more, but I'm like, you know, adult diapers, whatever. Um, but you could still go and hike with your family wear a diaper, you know what I mean? Mm. Um, so I, I think my perspective on that has changed. I think it, I think the legs do make everything easier. And I thought that was really interesting, but still when you take like a generic poll, I think when I poll my friends, it's always bowel and bladder. And I always had that saying that walking is overrating, overrated because of that. So, but I, yeah, I don't know why, just the way you explained it and you're like, you know, these things would be way easier, even if you still couldn't use your bowel and bladder, if you had the use of your legs, it just made me think about it a lot more than I have ever thought about it. So now I think my perspective has totally shifted, which is really funny because I've been saying the same thing for years and one, one really good argument <laughs> has got me like, whoa, that's mind blown. Yeah. Well, that's really interesting um, because I would I would be interested to know if other people felt the same way. Also, I will have to say uh, there is a caveat to that. Like, I don't suffer from fecal incontinence. I do uh, manual manual stimulation uh, for uh, doing a poo, and I use catheters. Yeah. And I also am very fortunate in the fact that I have sensation when I need to go for a, for a wee. So I'm like, oh, I need to do a catheter. Me too. And also, I realized uh, you have that as well. I do have bladder sensation. So yeah. I I literally had maybe like two like poop accidents in the whole time that I've been paralyzed, which is like 23 years. So I don't get fecal incontinence either. Um, but I do get the occasional like 
bladder incontinence. Uh -oh. um, but no, it's not usually like where I'm like soaked. It's like a little wet spot. Yeah, yeah. And that's it. Exactly. Because I can feel when I have to pee. So if I've just like waited too long or I have a bladder infection or something, then I'll leak. Um, but yeah. Yeah. So that is the caveat. I can feel when I need to pee. And using a catheter is really not that big a deal. It really isn't. Um, so, but also, yeah. So also I found out this, this isn't, this is something new. I figured, so I thought when I need to wee, it's urgent, you know, I need to go now. I figured out recently that I could actually hold it in like way better than I thought. And it was when I was playing poker and I had a good hand and I was like, oh man, I got to be in this hand. And I'd like, when I need a wee, I kind of like wiggle my bum a little bit. And I had managed to hold it in for for ages and then I was, and then the, then the feeling went away and I was like wow I didn't realize that I could I thought this was like an alarm bell you know you need to go for a catheter right now and I was like oh it's gone away and then when I when next went for a wee it was even bigger and I thought oh that's that's incredible so that's that's new that's new for me so uh so saying there's a caveat that I can feel when I need to go for a wee I'm not incontinent and I'm not and I don't have fecal incontinence if I suffered from those things that might change if you know that would be that would that would be that would suck and i'm sorry if there is anyone out there that does suffer from that uh, i'm sure you agree that it sucks um yeah. i think i would still take walking <laughs> there's there i know like i have lots of friends in wheelchairs and a lot of them do suffer from incontinence uh like pretty severe incontinence so i think that's why a lot of my friends would choose the bowel and bladder um back but yeah, it's, I, yeah, I have very minimal, uh, like pee incontinence and then yeah, no fecal incontinence. So it's an interesting concept though. I think it's a cool like question to ask. Um, and definitely, definitely a question that you can easily put on social media. So there's yeah. one piece of content for both of us. Well, if you guys are watching this on YouTube, then you can comment down below. <laughs> Exactly. Comment down below. What is your what is your uh, preference if you had to choose one? If you couldn't have both, what would it be? Yeah, and I guess it it, it it is a bit of a broader question. Like for me right now, I'd be like, oh hell, I would definitely take walking because pooing isn't a problem. My bowel program takes like less than ten minutes. Using a catheter isn't a problem, uh, but walking would be a game changer. But if you said, okay, you can walk, but you will piss yourself and poo yourself um i would be like mm, I, I would it's hard i would probably i'd really love to walk again you know like i know it's not everything but like it would it would open up so much you know um it would it bring back uh what's the word um I, well I, i'm assuming like my spasms would go away i'm assuming that um my muscle tone would come back you know i would uh get more exercise i'd be able to reach high things like it, it yeah, I would. Yeah. I think there's a lot of things that you could do. Yeah, there's so much, especially now that my kids are older and hiking and water skiing and snowboarding and uh, like all these things are things that like my kids are into that I'm just like, see you later. I'll go. I'll watch. <laughs> um, it's, you know, annoying um, and to have to sort of plan family things around things that I can do is uh, kind of frustrating for me and like I feel bad a lot so if I could walk and eliminate that and just you know take a catheter with me and hop on a toilet and cath then yeah because it's really cathing isn't hard for me either like it's not yeah. that difficult so yeah exactly so there you go, guys. That's our little conversation about bowel and bladder. There is so much more in the conversation. I think the podcast ended up being like an hour and 40 minutes or something. So it was a really long one, but such a good one. There's so many things in there that we talk about just in terms of our lives, um, YouTubers, and what we think about certain things about YouTube, um, about me as a mom, uh, bowel and bladder, just a whole bunch of things that we talk about. And it's uh, a really great conversation between friends and wheelchairs with a lot of um, things that I think are good for other people in wheelchairs to hear and people who aren't in wheelchairs, anybody really that wants to learn about life in a wheelchair or just our lives as people in wheelchairs. So uh, I hope you liked this video. If you want to see more of Fredo, you can go over, it's Fred, 
Uh, Freddo. I keep calling him Freddo because that's his nickname. But it's Fred, and he call he has a nickname is Freddo. But his wheel his ch uh, channel is Freddo the wheelchair. The his channel is Freddo the wheelchair guy. So if you want to go and see more of him, please go over to Freddo the wheelchair guy and check out all of his videos. He documented it in his entire journey uh, with a spinal cord injury from like almost the first day he was in the hospital um, to now. So yeah, it's really an awesome sort of snapshot of what life is like, uh, and the real emotions and all of the things that, uh, happen when you have a spinal cord injury to most of us. So go check him out. He's really great. And I know there's going to be many more collaborations to come. So that's all I got for you guys today. I hope you have an awesome, awesome week ahead and I will catch you back here on another video. Bye guys.